Hi everyone. Today we are planning to discuss on the data flows, one of the uh, critical component while doing the data transformations in ADF. So it has a lot more capabilities available as of today. Also the new capabilities also getting added during the passage of the time. So today use case, which we are going to discuss, like uh, consider there are two tables where you want to join and bring the common matching records with the additional fields required from both the tables. So usually using this case, usually you have to do SQL coding like joining using inner join or a left outer join or right outer join the full outer join you need to write a code in sql to join and to get the output in the target similarly in scala PySpark, also similar way you have to join you have to write a programming code however we can this easily achieve using data flows activity within adf since data flows is a kind of a code free kind of environment where drag and drop, we can achieve this use case in a simpler way. Let's see, go through the document. Uh, let's go through the source data sets, having a sample data, which I've taken to show you the use case for this demo. So I have a book data set in a CSV format in data lake storage Gen 2. Also have other author CSV. Let's check the data. What is having a book CSV? We can view this. Go to preview. We have a kind of book ID, book title, type of book, and there is a column called author ID. Basically, it is a kind of a primary foreign key relationship between this book and author, where because of this normalized form, they're using a referential integrity where we have author ID. When you join this table with author table using this ID common element, you can bring the data matching data from the author table. Let's see what is there in the author table. Let's preview this data as well. So basically you have the author name, first name, last name. Think like that you have a use case, you need to join these two data sets for the matching values based on common ID, common element between these two tables or author ID. With the matching author ID, you have to bring all the records which are matching. Additionally, the output should contain book ID, book title, no need of type and no need of author ID, it doesn't make sense. But in place of that, we need author first name, author last name, but it is having first name, last name as a metadata. We can do the changes during our transformation while I'm doing with data flows. So this is the data uh, sources. We need to join, we need to generate in the output. I will show you the location of the data storage location. This is a data like storage gen two. I have created a container called data flow where I have a file path called source within that I have these two data sets, author and book and a CSV. Similarly, I have another uh, folder where target uh, the output we are going to put it in here. Let's see, let's directly go to the uh, data factory. So basically for this use case, we required to create a pipeline which should contain an copy uh, data flow activity for that activity you need a link service to connect to the storage account also the data set the location path logical reference point of the source data sets two data sets we required and one data set required to be created for the output in the target folder of the container so one pipeline one data flow activity three data sets one link service we are going to create on the fly. Then we will do these transformations using the capabilities of data flow and we will generate the output 
as we discussed. Let's start. Go to author uh, pane. Let's create first data flow. So every data flow minimum required one source and sync. This is thumb rule without having any single source or without having a single sync, we cannot able to publish or we cannot able to move forward. So in this case, what are our sources? We have two sources uh, like <clears throat> book and author. Let's define the first source of, I'll try to make screen big for the book. We need to use just add source, right? We go there. In source, we will put as book data as a name. And then we need to create the data set. I'm just focusing on the elements, uh, parameters, or whatever the point which is relevant. I'm not focusing on other areas in this call to make it simple. Okay. So the other further sessions we will discuss, understand what each point mentioned in this bit. But right now the focus is more on to how we can able to join and bring the output. So to make it simple. So the source type is data set. It's already deep. Then we need to create a data set. So what is data set? It is a logical reference point of the data, which is in CSV format located in the data lake storage gen two. Then you need to select the data lake storage gen two. And the format is CSV. Continue. And we need to create the name. Book data set. And we need to create the link service. One link service is enough in this case because it is everything in a single container. Okay. And runtime auto, auto resolution, authentication account key. I'm not touching anything here. Free tile, storage account. Let's do a quick test connection. Done. Create. And also, we need to give the data set path where. So, for that, we need to go data flow, source, book. Okay. First was header, right? We need to be very clear while giving or else it will give it will give wrong incorrect results because we have very clear first was a header. So that's the reason. Just enable this option so that it will understand that first row is a header or else the first record will print as a header. Okay. So one source is done. Same thing I will quickly do for author. Let me add source. Author. Okay. To make it uniform, I will keep author data. You know, data like storage gento. This is also CSV format. Uh, data set we need to create. Author data set. Same link service. And I need to give the location path. And first row as a header. Okay. So now two sources are ready. We need to join now, right? So for that, just make a plus symbol here, right? It will give capabilities like multiple things. We need to select the join. So in this case, we are trying to do a inner join, right? So what is a join name? I'm giving some meaningful name called book author join. Okay. So what is the left table? Left table is a book data, book data. What is the right table? It is author data, which is a, these two sources. Like if I seeing name, right? Author data, book data, the same thing is selected. This is a join. So it's very graphically, if you want to do any type of join, just select default is inner join here. We are also going to do the inner join, but we have flexibility to choose based upon this. Just simple selection will solve your problem okay so here is a join conditions on what columns we need to do so it will give all the fields of this metadata of us so as i as i show you in author so we have a um, common column which we told right uh, it is author id uh, it's id in author table as well as the 
similar equivalent column is uh, book in book csv it's called author id so we need to link join on books data it is author id in write table it is id okay done join is done that's it so two sources you join on inner join on key author id id wherever there is a matching bring me all the values of matching with the this fields now we need to bring all the values from book date full author data no we have some relevant fields only required that we can achieve in multiple ways but right now i am to make it simple i will try to do during the mapping so now next step is to target sync right source is there transformation is happening now i will need to do for sync data set down here destination what destination is kind of output of the join operation what we are doing i'll be book author data okay okay so it is coming from the book data join this output only right not this output it will give all the data set we need to create the data set again so this is the last data set we are going to create similar way what we did csv here we'll keep book author data set link service same and you have to give the container folder okay first row as a header because output also we have it right we need to, we, we need to make sure we need to keep this one okay that's it we have created this one and settings so here we need to be bit careful while giving these settings the output can be routed to multiple ways like the default is there pattern is there per partition is there name folder as a column data name file as an output to a single file for the interest of the time we are trying to make it as output to single file that file name we need to mention very clearly or else because we have only target in target we don't have any folder exist for the output all right so here we need to specify what is a name i am going to give name book author output dot csv be careful with if you miss csv it might give some incorrect matching results render will not happen properly output to single file requires single partition to be selected partition type this system this setting sorry may impact performance and should only be used for smaller data set yeah let's click on this one that's it the rest i'm not doing at this point in time we don't require then the mapping okay so here is a mapping where we need to map the source and target which columns we require so auto mapping is done in this case let's disable this one we do manually what we thought of understood uh, we can change the output names or we can remove whichever is not relevant we thought of to bring uh, all the values of uh, uh, book right so what we <clears throat> wait a minute so we are interested id title only from this book table let's go keep it id title type also is required keep it okay for timing author id is not required let's remove let's remove from author table we are getting the first name and last name right so we required that actually so we need to be having this output this one first name and last name but it is just the same name using to make it better clarity i'll just give some addition book id title type
author author so it is very clear book id title will keep book title as well book type so the output will contain after join output book id book title book type author first name last name that's it so there is an option called data flow debug basically what we will do right uh, behind the scene data flows work uh, like uh, spark clusters will be created to execute this kind of code because behind the scene it will generate the code and it will run on this spark cluster so be careful once we enable this will charge you money for right now i am not doing basically this function will take some time to get enabled based on the capacity of cluster we choose what is the use because during your transformation if you want to see some sample data uh, whether uh, data between each stage is coming correctly or not without publishing without going output directly we can use this enable right now i am not focusing so let's uh, move on to uh, we are done so book data author data uh, you join and we have done this one okay let's validate we are fine what else we require so data flow activity is there but to to create this one we need to chain into a we need to chain put it into pipeline right we need to create one pipeline new pipeline i'll give a name i'll give some meaningful name data flow join then we need to select data flow give some name okay so in settings which one data flow we need to be you created this one right data of uh, data flow one so uh, let's rename this to some meaningful name okay so in settings select this book author data flow same thing it will come here so this is important point because here only we are telling that what integration runtime this is the computational power provided for this uh, data flows and we need to be very cautious while selecting the counts because i am just selecting the very minimum configuration because it will charge you money so be careful while your practice you choose only less let it take some more time also that is not our objective we need to save time and also parallelly money so that better to go with uh, minimum configuration as much possible yeah so let's go to parameters there is nothing here that's it everything you are done let's uh, validate now uh, fine so now let's we can do debug but again it will take some time to create some cluster and to run your code uh, while you are doing a transformation to see output right uh, that is not required here it will take more time i will directly go and publish and run from pipeline it will take some time just be patient for some time because we are on free subscription free subscription or pay as you go maybe may having some kind of uh, uh, a uh, slight some kind of delay would be expected uh, unlike enterprise accounts where you do in the companies right yeah so it is published is completed so we need to run the pipeline okay okay this is the pipeline how to run the pipeline we can do debug but in this case debug will enable this cluster tool right so in this case we have to go for trigger now okay trigger okay <sighs> basically this will take 4 to 5 minutes why because uh, behind the scene it should configure the cluster before executing your transformation logic which you build or using data flow and also the size of configuration is very minimal in our case it will take some time between 3 to 5 minutes be patient so that uh, 
will wait until it completes. So till that time, instead of waiting, I'll just uh, uh, explore some options in the data factory. Okay. So author tab. So as I told in the last class, the most of the activities we do from copy data activity, which basically use for ingesting the data from multiple sources into putting into raw container. So from there, we are doing shaping, cleansing using data flows. This is particularly for transformation. In real use cases, there is a need of doing some condition check, uh, if and else, if it is true, what to do, if it is false, what to do. So for those kind of things, we need to do some kind of iteration. These are very specifically we use, like if condition, where we, if output is this true, something, do some action or else, else some action. Similarly, to filter certain things, we can use filter uh, or, or else you have some tables, you have to go through all the records uh, like uh, one by one, like we can use for each. There's until condition where we can reach that condition. Similarly, we have a general section where we can create delete. If you want to do some deletion of any blob or a file, some we can use. Execute pipeline is just executing activities and creating calling pipeline from other pipeline where we can link two pipelines using execute pipeline. We can do, we can add it in the for each, the good use case. And any SS package we can execute and get metadata is a very important activity where we used to get the metadata of the container or a file location or a file where based on the metadata, like suppose if you want to check the size of the file based on that, you want to take any action. So get metadata will get the file name and size of that file. If it is more than zero and if it is between 10 KB or 100 KB, we have some condition process, some action we can do based upon the get metadata where that will understand that you have received the file with some kind of a data content to move forward. Also, no need to run the pipeline. Similarly, some any store processor we can run. And if you want to use set some variable temp in the flow, we can use set variable. Similarly, if you want to do some kind of web activity, like web web activity, you want to wait some time, we can use wait. So uh, uh, pretty much uh, this will be useful during your chaining your pipelines uh, uh, during the flow. So similarly, we have uh, uh, Databricks notebooks, right? Uh, this is something where we do coding, uh, which we can call these notebooks in our pipelines, like real time scenario, how it works, right? You have data to copy using from sources to the uh, container. From there, you will be doing some data flow transformations. If any complex transformations, if you want to do it, if design is to use Databricks, there we will, we will put the notebook here and change this notebook and that will internally trigger the Databricks cluster to execute that code. That output will be put it based upon use case. Similarly, you can use data lake analytics where use equal can be used. Similarly, you can use HD instead if you have any high or a peak or a spark or streaming is available. Similarly, machine learning use cases useful. There are some power query. So the list is evolving. Okay. So let's see our, where is our process? I think it is on the way to complete uh, because our configuration is low. It does, don't think that we have only four records or something. Why it, it is not issue with performance of the capability. It's only things that the, oh, it is done. It's a kind of a configuration we are using. Yeah, it is succeeded. So, okay, now go there. Okay. So now, target. Yes, we have the output book through output. Let's see how the output looks. Great, right? So book ID, book title, book type, and author first name, last name we have received. This is the output, right? Uh, after join output. So like this, a lot more capabilities we have in data flows. Uh, this is what I want to show for today. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.